So I'm going to be telling you about the six most important things that you should know about Myoclonus in the older Cavalier. First of all, what is Myoclonus and what does it look like? Well, Myoclonus translates as muscle, myo, clonus, contraction, and it's a sudden, brief, involuntary muscle jerk, usually of several uh, muscles, one big muscle group. And it looks like an electric shock is passing through the dog. And in the older Cavalier, this is characterised by rapid eye blinking and head nodding with a kind of variable extension to the forelimbs and the trunk. And you can see from this word cloud here that came from a paper uh, authored by Matt James of the most common signs that were reported by caregivers. So it involved the head jerking, affected their walking, affected their balance, twitches, um, etc. Now, compared to some other types of myoclonus, in the older Cavalier, this is characteristically when the dog is at rest, either sitting or uh, in, uh, in a, a laying down sphinx position, what we call sternal recumbency, or it occurs spontaneously. It doesn't seem to occur with other triggers like flashing lights, uh, going out into bright sunlight when the animal is uh, active, for example, running or in response to sudden sounds or loud sounds. Sometimes, especially when it extends down the trunk and down their legs, uh, they can stumble and fall. And we're going to have a look at a video now of uh, an older Cavalier King Charles Spaniel with this condition. So this is an almost 10 year old Cavalier King Charles Spaniel who's had uh, myoclonus for about two years, progressive through that time. So the episodes are getting more severe. As you can see, it starts with a sort of blinking of his eyes, goes to a head nod and then a whole body nod. It sometimes goes down to his thoracic limbs. Uh, as, as in here, you can see the head nodding, jerking, uh, and then he almost stumbles. And then in this uh, clip coming up here, uh, the poor love actually does fall over. So our second point is the age of onset, which for most cavaliers is when they're about eight. Occasionally it's seen a bit younger, um, from about six years of age. And usually if they're going to develop it, you will have seen signs of it by 10 years of age. The third point is there are, are other causes of myoclonus and you may be watching this video and you don't have a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. So what are those important other causes? Well, in the older dog, the most important cause is the progressive myoclonic epilepsy called Lafora disease. Now, this is an inherited disorder and there is a genetic test for it. Again, it tends to occur from eight years or older. I've yet to see it in the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, but potentially it could occur in any breed or crossbreed because the dog has um, a, a, a gene which is fundamentally unstable, which makes them predisposed to getting Lafora's disease. But they do have to have two copies of that gene. So it is more common in, in, um, in uh, purebred dogs, especially miniature wirehaired dachshunds, beagles, Basset Hounds, French Bulldogs, Riffon Broussolois and Chihuahuas. Now, importantly, the myoclonus in Lefora's disease is a reflex myoclonus and it's triggered by flashing light, loud and sudden sounds or occurs in sleep, which we call hypnic jerks. Um, hypnic jerks, it should be said, are uh, seen in everybody. Um, it is the type of jerk that you can feel sometimes as you're falling asleep and you just give a, um, a, a sudden jolt. So every animal, uh, every person will have hypnic jerks. But in uh, La Forest disease, these hypnic jerks occur every single time they go to sleep and can be so violent that they can cause them to wake up or, uh, or bolt upright. The next most important cause of myoclonus is distemper. Now, fortunately, in developed uh, countries where there's a high rate of vaccination, we don't see distemper very commonly. And uh, uh, when we do see it, it's most likely to be in dogs that have been adopted from a geographical region with endemic disease, meaning that it's widespread in the population. 
Distemper myoclonus occurs after an infection of distemper, after the dog has so-called recovered from it. But unfortunately, it is a disease which leaves permanent damage to the nervous system. And myoclonus is one of the most common uh, manifestations of that permanent damage. The other important cause of myoclonus is metabolic disease. Um, this has to be relatively serious metabolic disease, such as kidney failure or liver failure. And also some drugs are capable of causing it. Um, and these are usually rare drug side effects, but particularly drugs that affect serotonin, such as fluoxetine, tramadol, trazodone but particularly when those drugs are given in combinations which is not that common but may be done for some uh, animals with behavioral uh, issues such as anxiety. It is also theoretically possible as a paradoxical effect so quite unusual effect in some anti-epilepsy drugs including gabapentin and pregabalin and this has relevance to the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel because they may already be re receiving those drugs and there are many other drugs uh, that are capable of causing this and uh, and uh, this would also include drugs of recreation that the dog may be inappropriately exposed to uh, and also things like caffeine and chocolate so it's important to investigate the dog's history so how is it diagnosed? This is our fourth point. Well, really, we have two tiers of confidence. And if it is an older Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, then most neurologists will accept the diagnosis based on the video of the dog, uh, which is why it's important to video what your dog is doing. And the advent of the mobile phone has really revolutionized uh, neurological diagnosis and also helps to make it an awful lot cheaper. It's important to do a neurological exam to rule out uh, anything else that might be going on with that dog. And in the case of the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel with, with myoclonus, it should be normal unless that dog has some other neurological problem and uh, they are predisposed to uh, several neurological diseases. You do need to rule out um, drugs and metabolic disease. So it's a good idea to take a blood sample uh, to check that uh, everything's OK. Uh, with their organs and review their medication. For other breeds, and if you wanted to take that extra step with the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, then genetic screening for La Forest disease. I've not yet found a Cavalier that has been positive for this. It doesn't seem to be a gene that has yet emerged in that population. And you can do an MRI scan to rule out other diseases. So number five, how is it treated? Well, the most common drug that we use is levetiracetam. And this is a human anti-epilepsy drug, which is licensed for the treatment of juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. And it is used off license in humans for uh, several other myoclonic disorders. And it seems to be very useful for many dog and cat myoclonic disorders. And the dose is uh, 10 to 20 milligrams per kilogram. Uh, it usually has to be given three times daily, but sometimes you can get away with twice daily with myoclonus. Um, and the general principle is that you start low and you uh, titrate up slowly. It's usually well tolerated in the dog. You do need to monitor for sedation. Some dogs, and this is quite rare, have a gastrointestinal upset. And uh, it is also possible to see changes in behavior, especially anxiety. Again, that's less common. However, early or mild cases may not need to be treated. And in fact, the dogs may go uh, several years before treatment is started. And when do you start treatment? Well, my general rule is that you start treatment when it's starting to, to really impact on their quality of life, especially if they're starting to fall over. You do need to review their other medication. As I've said before, uh, gabapentin and pregabalin has a potential to uh, cause myoclonus. Uh, I think this is actually quite rare, but um, it is worthwhile reviewing the dose because some older Cavalier King Charles Spaniels may need a dose reduction when this has been prescribed for Chiari malformation and syringomyelia. And that's because as the dog gets older, their brain shrink shrinks, uh, gets smaller. 
And Chiari malformation is characterized by having a too big a brain for the skull. And so in some Cavalier King Charles Spaniels and other dogs affected by this um, condition, the severity of disease may actually have reduced and they may require less medication. Also, older dogs are more susceptible to the adverse effects of these drugs and they may be slower at eliminating these drugs. So it may be worthwhile, um, certainly worthwhile asking your vet to review that medication and see whether a dosage reduction is necessary if the dog has been prescribed this for many years. You also need to review any drugs that, that might affect serotonin. Again, it's not might not be necessary to, to stop that, but it, it should be certainly considered whether or not uh, some of these drugs should be altered. So how does myoclonus progress, our sixth point? Well, over years, the episodes of myoclonus tend to become more frequent and more severe. As we saw uh, in our little chap in the video earlier, uh, he'd been having this for two years and it was now at the stage where he was falling over. So it was at this point that he started to have um, be prescribed the drug levetiracetam. Uh, and uh, if the episodes became more frequent or stopped responding to that medication, then that's the indication to start increasing it. This may be a progressive myoclonic epilepsy. What do we mean by this? Well, in progressive myoclonic epilepsies, they also have um, regular seizures. And in many cases, they have a disease which causes cognitive decline, which means um, similar to a dementia or similar to Alzheimer's in humans. And in the cavalier populations, some dogs have developed a cognitive decline. But we have to remember these are older dogs, so a proportion of them are going to have cognitive decline anyway. Uh, of the uh, populations of cavaliers that have been studied with this, 15 to 23 percent, 15 in one study, 23 percent in another study, developed generalized tonic-clonic, that is to say epileptic seizures. But we also have to consider that epilepsy is common in the cavalier breed. So uh, that question remains unanswered. But these conditions may need a separate assessment and certainly need separate treatment. So those are our six points. I'd like to acknowledge the family of Percy, uh, who we saw in the video, that the sweet little dog. Um, also Cavalier Matters and Frazzle Cat for providing the cartoons and also Matt Jaynes and Karina Rotter Black for their research papers on this disease, which you can see in the images here. And thank you very much for listening to me.